There's one snake you don't touch. That's Leviathan. Okay, you don't grab him by the head. If you see Leviathan, he looks like a dragon in the ocean or a crocodile. You don't grab him. You let the God do it. And let me see if I can find my scripture so I can prove that's true. <clears throat> Here it is. Let's listen to this scripture from Isaiah 27. This is in the Amplified Classic, my favorite. In that day, the Lord will deliver Israel from her enemies and also from the rebel powers of evil and darkness. His sharp and unrelenting great and strong sword will visit and punish Leviathan, the swiftly fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting winding serpent, and he will slay the monster that's in the sea. Okay, did you hear that? He will slay the monster that's in the sea. His sharp and unrelenting great and strong sword will visit and punish Leviathan. God takes care of Leviathan for you. Your job is to get healed of everything you have in common with him. Remember, Jesus said it, John 14, 30, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. The enemy will not have any power over you if you don't have anything in you that's in common with him. What, what, what do we have in common with Leviathan? Pride, bitterness, because it says in Job that Leviathan is the king of the children of pride. So he becomes your king when you're walking in pride. So don't get prideful in your marriage. Don't get prideful with your boss and all that other stuff. And if you do, repent. And if you see the twisting of the conversations and all this other stuff and other things, he causes cancers and all kinds of pain, body pains and things like that. It could be Leviathan. If you get down on your knees, humble yourself and repent of pride and then apply some fire, you're going to get healed. Now, does the Bible prove that fire is part of the part of having dominion over a Leviathan? Yes. Listen to the rest of the scripture in Isaiah 27 in the Amplified Classic. It goes from talking about Leviathan and how God's going to punish him with his, his um, swift, great, and unrelenting and sharp sword to saying this. This is the next verse. Listen to this. Let's put it up on the screen if we can. A vineyard, beloved and lovely, sing a responsive song to it and about it. The Lord... I am its keeper. I water it every moment, least anyone harm it. I guard and keep it night and day. Wrath is not in me. With the briars and thorns. Oh. Okay, let me stop right there. It went from talking about Leviathan. Back it up a little bit. It went from talking about Leviathan. Let's go to the very first verse so you can see it. See that? In the day the Lord will deliver Israel from her enemies. He will visit and punish Leviathan. So he's talking about Leviathan. Go to next, the ver next verse. Then all of a sudden he starts talking about, okay, he's the twisting fleeing serpent. Next verse. Then all of a sudden he starts talking about, in that day, I, I, it will be said of the redeemed nation of Israel, a vineyard, beloved and lovely. Sing a responsive song to it. Okay, who's the vineyard? So he's, he goes from talking about Leviathan to us, the vineyard. Next verse, next part. It says, I am the Lord, I'm the keeper of the, of, the, of the vineyard. I water it every moment, least anyone harm it. I guard it, I keep it day and night. So he's saying, we're the vineyard, and he's guarding us, he's keeping us. From what? From Leviathan. He was just talking about Leviathan in verse 1. Read it in context, okay? So he's talking about guarding you and keeping you from Leviathan. Now, next verse. Here's your part. He says, wrath is not in me. Would the briars and thorns, the wicked, internal foe, line up against me in battle... I would stride in against them, and I would burn them. Everybody say fire. fire. Okay, so here God's telling us our part. He said, look, I'm going to take care of Leviathan. I'm going to slay him with my sharp and unrelenting sword. You're my vineyard. I'm watering you. I'm guarding you. And guess what? Part of that is this part. When the briars and thorns that are inside you, the wicked internal foe, rise up against me, I'm going to burn them with fire. What's the wicked internal foe? It's the junk in your trunk. It's the pride. It's the bitterness. It's the anger. It's all that stuff. That's what the briars and thorns are in the vineyard. Those briars and thorns in the vineyard are the wicked internal foe. It's the junk in your soul that's allowing Leviathan to attack you in the first place. And what, God, what does God say he's going to do with those things? He's going to burn them. He's going to burn them. Notice how he says the wicked internal foe. Lines up against him in battle. That's what fights God, your soul. Your spirit ain't fighting God. It's all the junk in your trunk that's fighting God. 
That's what's lined up against him in battle. And when we line up against him, oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, God, oh, what are you doing? Ah, he burns that junk up with fire, unquenchable fire. He separates the chaff from the wheat, and he burns up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Our part in defeating Leviathan is to get healed with the fire of God and the cross of Jesus Christ.